on this river to fish and it's the brown drakes and the, the pattern I'm tying is just it, it's just a done mayfly pattern so you could you could literally use uh, uh, different materials different colors and sizes to cover virtually all of the mayfly hatches that you guys have here on the Missouri this here's a size 8 and uh, what I'm going to use for a tail is just some wood duck uh, the drakes definitely have a barred tail um, something else that uh, I'm going to try and do when I tie this tail in is that all feathers have got kind of a natural curvature and, and the tails of most mayflies tend to, to go upward a little bit. So we'll try and get the, the fiber spacing upward. As far as length here goes, I would go a, a minimum of uh, a one shank length, if not one and a half. Just sort of. Tie those in. For the body of this and for the body of a lot of the mayflies that I tie, I'm going to use uh, just a turkey by it. These here are, are trout hunters. They have lots of colors. And because the abdomen of, of this fly in particular is, is very alternating as far as colors go, there's kind of a, a, a brown band and then a light band. I'm actually going to use the thread base for half of the abdomen. And then when we tie in the turkey by it, we're going to space the wrap so that you get to actually see the, the underside of the thread and you get the segmented look as well as the, the, the different colors. So we'll build up a nice base. Uh, with the bayet, um, there's a couple of ways to tie these in. You can tie them in so that you, you actually get uh, the, the fringes that come off one of the fibers showing, or you can tie it in so that um, those are hidden. I'm going to tie it in so that I, I do get to see those fringes. I think it gives it a nice segmented look, and it, for this particular fly, it looks a little bit better. So in order to get that, what I'm going to do is... If, you, if we look at the bayet here, there's, there's two edges. The top edge is almost translucent and very, very smooth and tapered. The bottom end has, has little fringes, and these are the fringes that actually enable the, the feather fibers to lock together. So for, so for this fly, I want the, the clear, smooth end up and then the, the, the fringed end on the bottom. The bayets are also paired. And if you grab the right side, everything wraps naturally. So we'll get that tied in and hopefully I can wrap this without it breaking. Uh, what a lot of people do with biots is they'll soak them before they wrap them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it from the back to the front and I'm going to try and leave a little space between every wrap so that a little bit of that thread underbody shows. Something else that I try and do with, with flies like this is uh, if we look at proportions, the abdomen is roughly about half of the, uh, the, the length of the body. And uh, instead of just wrapping up to a half, I try and go a little bit past. That way you have lots of room to, to tie things off. And if you look here, you can see that I've probably gone sort of two-thirds rather than a half. But I can always come back and I can sort of build up the, um, the, the thorax on top of what I've wrapped. So now we have half of the fly finished. Uh, for the dubbing with this, I'm from Canada and I, we have, the, I guess, kind of the, the fortune that we can use uh, seal fur up there. So for the flies that I would fish up at home, I would, I would normally use seal right here, but a pretty good substitute is just Angora goat. And you can get this in, in most colors. How about beaver? Beaver, uh, yeah, you could, probably, you could literally use anything here. Um, the reason I like both uh, Angora and seal is that there's lots of sort of these long, kinky, gnarly fibers. And when you yeah. dub it, they kind of look like, like legs and, and bug parts. So I'm just going to loose dub a, a, a little ball here. 
And the function of this first piece of dubbing, it, it, it's kind of twofold. It's going to first of all build the, the first segment of the, the abdomen here. And I want to make sure that I have a ball here because the, the second function is I'm going to tie my wings right up against it. And for this particular fly, I'm going to have a, a mature done, so I want the wings to stand straight up. And by having a good little ball here, when I tie my wings up against it, everything will, will nicely flare up. Uh, <clears throat> for the wings, I'm going to use CDC, and I think Wheelerman talks about this. There are, there are a number of different fibers, and, and the fibers have uh, probably are suited to tie certain flies better than, than other flies. What I'm kind of looking for here is, uh, number one, uh, fairly long fibers, and I want them to be, I'm going to pair these up and actually put these in three, and you want them fairly even. Uh, Something else, because uh, this is going to be a wing on its own, not wrapped or dubbed, you want all the fibers to be as straight as possible. Um, when you start to sift through the bags, there's, there's fibers that are all, all twisted and turned. Uh, <clears throat> with the, the brown drake done, they tend to have a, a mottled wing, and the wing is, is, is uh, it's almost grayish with sort of blackish or, or brown veins. In order to sort of imitate that, I'm going to use two different colors of CDC. Uh, another reason that I'm going to use two different colors of CDC is that a lot of times the drakes, and especially the spinners, tend to come out later at night. And uh, at night, even with big flies like this, it, it can be hard to see, and probably the easiest color to see is black. So I'm going to definitely incorporate some black into this, and the black, besides being easy to see, will, will re represent... Uh, the, the veins for, for this fly. So I've, I've put together three CDC fibers. Um, again, they all have a curvature, and I put all of the curves together. And I'll tie the first wing, uh, the one that's closest to me. And I want the, the fibers to sort of splay apart. If we're looking at the, the hook this way, I want them to splay this way. So I'll have the curves facing myself. As far as length for the wing goes, um, for a, a, a fully mature done, you want probably one shank length, so I'll measure that. And then just wrap it so that it's pressed right up against our, our dubbing ball. We'll get rid of that. Then I'll just use the first wing that I've tied as kind of a, a length guide. Lay it side by side, but on the side of the shank facing away from me. A couple of soft loops, wrap that down. So I have a wing that sticks up, um, hopefully looks like it's veined, and then because it's black, it'll be something that's really easy to see at night. Uh, <clears throat> next material that I'm going to tie on is going to be um, just some partridge hackle. And with this, I only want one or two wraps tops. And these are going to represent some of the legs of this fly. True insects only have six legs, so you don't need you don't need an awful lot of wraps. Forgot my hackle pliers, so mm -hmm. one wrap in, and then I'll just pull the fibers up. Hopefully, get about equal amounts on both sides and secure them with a, a couple of wraps. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more dubbing and just dub a little little head on here. When you look at these naturals, they have a, a relatively big head. And just a couple whip finishes. That one did cap that one did cost me some blood.